Hello, everybody. I'm not sure how many people are there, but I welcome you today. We'll wait a couple of minutes to make sure we get lots of people on the call. We have about 25 people that have joined, are going to join the call. We hope that they can make it on this snowy day across the United States. So I'm going to go ahead and start because I believe that we are going to have uh, a good time, 45 minutes or so to discuss this trip and to answer questions. So we'll go ahead and start at this point. I want to introduce uh, myself, Carrie Allen, director of the Vanderbilt Travel Program. But most importantly, two people, Margaret, Margaret Devlin with Thalys Journeys and then Clay Krebs behind the scenes here who will be receiving questions and answers at the end of the webinar and we'll uh, get them answered as best we can either from the travel program or from Margaret or from both of us and we'll give you lots of information. So Margaret Devlin and I have worked together for at least 20 years and I think prior to that probably about 25 years with Vanderbilt if not more. The um, Thales of Journeys was previously uh, in another company called Travel Dynamics, which I believe that you all probably re recall. We had wonderful trips on small ships through the Mediterranean and all over the world. So through the years, they have morphed into yet another wonderful company, same ownership, Greek ownership, which is terrific, or by two gentlemen that are Greek descent. Uh, and Margaret has been there with them the entire time. We have worked together beautifully for years. I feel like there's no better uh, tour operator to do a trip such as this, the glory of Greece and the Greek islands. I mean, there'll be special things about this trip. There are great contacts in Greece that only, uh, excuse me, only Thales Journeys will have. And I think that's so important for the success of a trip like this. Just a couple of things to say at the end of the, we'll, we'll probably keep it to 45 minutes, no more than an hour. At the end of this, uh, you'll note, it, note the question and answer button at the bottom of your screen. And uh, please submit those questions. Clay will be reminding you too about that um, as we go along. And then we'll respond to them at the end. Margaret will also be addressing the latest uh, updates in Greece about protocols and uh, requirements there and things that will be evolving as we go towards this trip. Thank you all for, for moving it again to June. I think that's a smart thing to do. And uh, we will just look forward to reviewing this fabulous itinerary in detail. And uh, again, we just are so grateful that you all are here, getting rid of my pop-ups there, and uh, look forward to hearing Margaret give us some details on this wonderful trip. Margaret, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Carrie. And thank you, Vanderbilt alumni and friends, for joining us today to learn more about this fabulous trip to Greece. I think Carrie and I began planning this trip, what, two and a half years ago, Carrie? <laughs> um, and there's a lot of customization for Vanderbilt on the program. And as Carrie mentioned, um, she and I have worked together for many years. Um, I started my career with Travel Dynamics in 1978. And um, one of the first places that I traveled with Travel Dynamics was to Greece. And I was as blown over then as I was not this past summer, because none of us could go anywhere, but the prior two summers I've returned to Greece. And although for most of my life, Italy's been my favorite country. I think that Greece has now superseded it, or I think it's superseded it. It's an amazing place. So I hope that with the slides that I'm going to show you today to give you a bit of a preview of the types of experiences that we will have on this program. I thought it, I always like to start with a map so that we get a sense of where we are and where we're going. And so this trip begins with two nights in Athens. And um, so you'll see that um, 
prominently featured. And we're going to be making basically a circle through the Cycladic Islands. Um, and following our stay in Athens, we will fly to Crete. We'll have a three night host hotel stay in Crete. Um, it is one of the largest islands in the Mediterranean. It's the fifth largest island in the Mediterranean. It has a very deep history, ranging from the Bronze Age, of course, to the present. And while there, we'll have an opportunity to see it in greater depth than most travelers have the opportunity to do. And you'll see how special that is. Then, so that you get a bit, a bit of an experience of being on the water in the Aegean, we will be traveling by ferry, and these are very modern, sophisticated, fast ferries that will, one ferry will transport us from Crete north to Santorini. It's about a two hour transit by ferry. We'll enjoy two nights on Santorini. And then again, by ferry, we will proceed north to Naxos. Noxos will serve as our base, not only for seeing the island itself, which is off the touristic route, it provides a much more, I would say, authentic, real introduction to Greece and the way Greeks live in their own villages. And from Noxos, we will have a full day excursion, again, by small boat, uh, taking us to the sacred island of Delos, and to Mykonos, which is of course one of the most iconic of the Greek islands. We return back to Naxos for our final night and then we fly to Athens. We have one night at the Athens um, Sofitel Airport Hotel, which is right on the property at the airport. We do that so that people are have no um, possibility of misconnecting on their return flights home and they'll be right across from the airport uh, main terminal for returning back to the United States. I will start my presentation with, of course, the most iconic um, image of Athens, which is of this, the huge rocky upcropping, up rock cropping that rises up from the plain. Um, the entire area around Athens is very flat with the exception of this rock. Um, it has been inhabited and there have been various um, statues and so forth there since prehistoric times, but we really know it for its time um, of the golden age of Athens when the Acropolis was built. But to give you a sense of the layering of the civilization here, if you look just below the Acropolis at the, at the other stone building that has various arches, that is a Roman theater. So you're constantly going to be sort of moving between Greece and Rome and also civilizations that predated uh, the golden Greek civilization. I don't know if any of you saw photographs yesterday on the news or in your newspapers of Athens, of the Acropolis completely covered with snow, but it was an amazing sight. So deep freeze is happening all over the world right now. I mentioned the, that theater, and so this is standing up on the Acropolis, looking down um, at the Roman theater uh, of uh, Herod Atticus. Many performances take place at this theater. It's entirely possible that one will be scheduled when we're in Athens. We are there in 2021, which is the celebration of the 200th anniversary of the founding of modern Greece, of the modern democratic Republic of Greece. And there'll be not lots of celebrations and events taking place throughout the country while we're there. Another of the great attractions on the Acropolis is the, I still call it the new Acropolis Museum. It opened about eight years ago. It's a spectacular building, much larger than the former Acropolis Museum. And it houses many artifacts from uh, from, the, from the Acropolis itself. And here you see the Caryatides, which originally were on the Acropolis, but have been brought inside to, of course, protect them from the elements. While in Athens, one of the places that you'll want to enjoy and explore is the area called the Plaka. It's about a five minute walk from the hotel where we will be staying. And if you get out early in the morning, you'll be able to get a picture like this, perhaps without any people populating it yet. But by, I don't know, a few hours later, 
Um, it's a busy, bustling place. This is an area of Athens with many restaurants, cafes, wonderful shopping, um, and a very pleasant place to explore. On our final day in Athens, we will travel in the afternoon south of Athens to an area called Cape Sunyan. And it is here that we will um, visit the Temple of Poseidon. It's a magnificent temple and it's particularly special to be there at sunset. And we will be there at sunset. And we will also have a wonderful taverna dinner that evening uh, near, uh, near, the, near the Temple of Poseidon. So that should be a very pleasant way to end our time in Athens. I thought that I would just briefly show you a few images of the hotels where we're staying on the trip. Uh, we're certainly not selling this trip for its hotels. We're selling it for the educational experience, but it's also kind of nice to know about the creature comforts that you'll enjoy. So in Athens, we um, stay at the Athens Plaza Hotel. It overlooks Constitution Square, which is the main civic square of Athens. Um, at the top of the square is the Parliament Building where you can see the changing of the guard several times during the day. The hotel was totally renovated uh, in the past two years. So you can see that the, um, the rooms are very modern and sleek in their decor. But then they've also maintained some of the traditional atmosphere of the um, older hotel in the club lounge that you see here. Um, and then the lobby has the much more modern um, appearance. But it's a very lovely hotel, beautifully located in the heart of things and an easy walking distance to the places that you'll want to go. We will fly from Athens to Crete. And the first image that I'm showing of Crete is of the Venetian um, castle that guards the harbor of Heraklion, which is the main, the main harbor and main seaport of Crete. And um, I'm showing this because throughout the Cycladic Islands, you'll see a Venetian influence in many, many places. Um, Venice controlled the Cycladic Islands for over 400 years, from about 1200 uh, to the six, late 1500s, early 1600s. Um, and that is when the Venetian Empire really dominated the Mediterranean. And so you'll, you'll see these vestiges of Greece uh, in, excuse me, vestiges of Italy in many places that we travel. While in Crete, um, we will take an, ex we will have an excursion out of Heraklion, the major city, um, a wonderful full day tour traveling north and west, visiting several very important archeological sites. One of these is Gortine, which is Roman. And here you see a small uh, Roman theater, Odeon. Another is a spectacular, um, much earlier Minoan palace called Festos. Now, when people think of Crete, they think of the palace at Knossos. And we will be visiting the palace of Knossos. You'll see that uh, in a couple of images later. But there are other quite significant Minoan palaces that are much truer to their original appearance than Knossos was, or is, I should say. And we travel through this gorgeous fertile plain, uh, the Messini Plain, to reach Festos. And I think one of the great attractions of Crete is just how beautiful the countryside is. It's rolling. Uh, we'll be going up into some mountainous area. You'll see many, many vineyards. You'll see many olive orchards. Um, I think that Crete has a huge business in exporting both olive oil um, and wines, which are considered some of the finest in the Mediterranean. This is another image um, of the Minoan Palace at Festos. And then here on this same full day tour, we will be going up to um, a town on the northern coast of Crete, a harbor town called Rethymnon. And Rethymnon uh, was an extremely important harbor uh, during the time of the Venetian Empire. And you can see here in some of the town streets that you'll have the opportunity to explore on your own, um, this Venetian 
influence. I feel like I could almost be on uh, a, town, a, a street in Italy when I think of this uh, architecture and the, the feeling and the appearance of this particular um, view of Rethymnon. We also, um, on a different day, will have the opportunity to visit the sites that are closer to Arachleon itself. Uh, this is an image of the palace at Knossos. And at the time that it was discovered in the 1800s, the methodology for excavations was not as developed as it is now. So a lot of what was excavated was just kind of tossed aside <laughs> and viewed as not as important, but it has been reassembled um, in the way that it was thought to originally look. Um, it dates from 1600 BC. And um, when you're there, you'll see things such as the um, many intricate things, the, the, the sewage system, the plumbing system. I mean, it was a highly, highly sophisticated society um, dating from almost 4,000 years ago. While um, in Arachleon, one of the highlights is visiting the Arachleon Archaeological Museum. Um, this is pottery that dates from that same period. If you look at it carefully, you see uh, a motif of octopuses uh, on these various large clay jars. And this is a particularly iconic symbol. Uh, she is known as the snake lady. Um, up on the top of her hat, I will call it, is the head of a snake, and it winds all around her, her, uh, her body. And then perhaps one of the main highlights of, of our stay, not only in Crete, but throughout the entire trip, will be the quality and the variety of the food. And when you travel from place to place, you'll start to appreciate the different cheeses that are endemic to specific islands, um, the different dishes, and our guide will really help point out to you the soil, the, the various things that contribute to why the cuisine varies from place to place. Um, but, you know, just being able to relax and enjoy the time at the Tavernas, the meals end up being one of the great experiences because on a land tour, there's no pressure about getting back to the ship in time to sail to the next island. So it's a, it's a much more relaxing experience, in my opinion, on a land tour than on um, a cruise program. Cruise programs are also wonderful in their own right. But I like to emphasize the positives of, of this particular trip and experience. And then just to give you a sense of our hotel in Arachleon, we're at the Megaron Hotel. You'll see here from one of the porches, uh, the view looking out at the um, harbor of Arachleon. And then here in this view, uh, you can see actually the Venetian castle that we saw in the first image. And then I don't know if you can see very well on the very right side of uh, this dining room shop, but there's a wall mural with many different types of ships. And to me, that's quite emblematic of the importance of shipping on the island of Crete. Um, back in the very early period, in the Minoan period, the Minoans had a huge naval presence and fleet that was trading with Egypt and other parts of the Mediterranean. And of course, we will be sailing out of Heraklion and have that experience of being on the sea um, as we sail um, from Heraklion to the magnificent island of Santorini. So I chose this image because it really is what Santorini is going to look like when you approach it by ship. Um, our ferry boat, which takes about two hours for the passage, um, will land down in the caldera. You can see this very volcanic terrain here and you're seeing of the caldera. Um, when there was this enormous volcanic eruption um, at Santorini, um, half of the island really just dropped into the sea. And so we come into this area by ship where a portion of that caldera still exists. Um, there's a special pier for the ferries, so we will not be with the 
uh, tenders that go back and forth from the major cruise ships. We'll have a dock where we get off right at the dock and we'll have our mini buses there that will take us and our luggage um, up to our hotel for our two night stay in Santorini. One of the places that you'll see in Santorini, which is the image on the cover of the Vanderbilt brochure is the little village of Oya. And um, it's particularly iconic. Um, it's known for the wines that are produced in this region as well. And then the highlight of our stay in Santorini from an archeological standpoint, we'll be visiting the excavations at Akrotiri. And um, Akrotiri um, is also Minoan, so it dates from the same period as the sites that we will have seen on Crete. Um, it's a magnificent site because it was covered with pumice with the eruption of the volcano, which is associated by many with, with the legend of Atlantis. But as is the case with Pompeii, where everything was covered with the, with the pumice and preserved and therefore could be very carefully and accurately excavated because it just sort of created a, a freeze frame. Uh, the same is true of Akrotiri. So this is a close up of one of the images there, but it's quite a significantly large site. It's all covered um, to prevent the elements from falling on it. But we are able to walk through the site, see the houses where people lived, see how they lived. Um, it's a truly fascinating um, site. And also very beautiful is the museum um, of ancient Thera in the village of Thera. And here at the museum, we will see some of the frescoes that were um, discovered at Akrotiri, which remain on the island. Many of the other um, frescoes are in the National Archaeological Museum in Athens. And then also in this museum, we will see a, chronolo a chronology of the civilizations uh, in, in Santorini. Our accommodations in Santorini are at the Santorini Palace Hotel, which you can see is very inviting. Wonderful swimming pool, which in June um, should be readily used and uh, welcome at the end of our excursions. Um, but as you can see, it's a, a light filled place that um, picks up on the typical architecture of Santorini. From Santorini, we will be taking again another ferry. So this will be our second and last uh, ferry ride on the trip. And again, it's about two hours to travel by ferry from Santorini to the island of Naxos. Uh, this is the main uh, town of Naxos. Uh, it is called Cora. It has a Venetian um, castle, uh, Castro, at the top of the uh, the village. And so we come right into this area and uh, we will be staying just outside the town of Cora for our two night stay uh, on the island of Naxos. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Naxos is not as touristic as other Cycladic islands. And so you'll get a real sense of, of authentic Greece. Uh, one of the places where we will be having um, lunch there is an agroturismo farm. So you'll see how the various products are produced on that farm. On that excursion, um, one of the places that we will stop is at the Temple of Demeter, which is um, part of the archaeological excavations just outside of the main town. We will also visit a truly charming visit, a village called um, Halki, spelled C-H-A-L-K-I. And again, I think you can see with the shape of the archways, um, some of the Venetian influence um, is evident here. And throughout the trip, you will have really wonderful photographic opportunities. Um, one will be just to view the village life, the daily life that's going on apace, such as this particular uh, Greek Orthodox priest who is uh, ringing the bells uh, in one of the villages on the island of Naxos. And then the other is just a close up of tables at a taverna 
but I always find that these, just everywhere you look, there are intimate scenes and wonderful things to capture, whether it's the children playing soccer in the town square, uh, whether it's the restaurants, the types of fruits and vegetables that you'll see growing in the gardens. It's really a feast for the eyes and for the senses. Uh, we will be going past and visiting several of the beautiful Byzantine churches um, on the island of Naxos. And you come upon these, there's more or less in the middle of nowhere. You think, why is there a church in this place? There's no village. It's just out here by itself. Um, but it's because in that period of time, there were smaller villages, there were settlements, and the church was very much the center of life for the inhabitants. So small churches were built all over the place to give people um, this foundation and many of sort of the foundation of their civic lives. And um, many of the churches do have magnificent frescoes um, and um, mosaics, which we will see. And I mentioned the um, farm to table lunch that we will have in Naxos. So this is an example of that. And on numerous occasions, we'll have the opportunity to dine outside um, sometimes it'll be in a seaside village where we're dining down by the water. Um, in other cases, it will be inland. And um, the food in Greece is one of the great um, attractions. Um, backing up to Crete for just a minute, uh, Crete is known as really the birthplace of the Mediterranean diet, um, which has become very famous and popular in this country, but really things that are uh, based on fruits and vegetables and cheeses, not too many meats because people couldn't afford the meat. Um, lots of olive oil, but all of these in, things in combination make for such a healthy diet and you'll feel like you're feasting um, on the most healthy food imaginable. While we're um, on the island of Naxos, we'll have a full day excursion via boat to two very close nearby islands. The first of these is the island of Delos. And Delos is an unoccupied island. The entire island is a sanctuary. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, and it is associated um, from the mythological standpoint as being the birthplace of the twins, Apollo and Artemis. Um, so we'll travel by boat and then our guide will take us um, on a walking tour through many of the archaeological sites on the island, but it's, it's absolutely magnificent. This is, um, these are called, this is called the Lion um, Walkway. There are several um, very ancient lions that guard the entrance to the archaeological site of Gilos. And after we've toured the site, we will then take our same boat um, over to the island of Mykonos. And um, here you see the iconic Cycladic architecture, the very um, square buildings, the very flat roofs. The flat roofs are so that people can um, harvest water because water, fresh water is at a premium. And so that's how people collected their water. Um, also iconic in Mykonos are the windmills, which you see in the distance here. And it's a great place at the end of the trip for you to do sort of your final shopping of anything that you forgot or think you wish to get. Um, the shopping in Mykonos uh, is, is really wonderful and varies from, you know, junky, uh, shops with t-shirts to really exquisite shops with the finest jewelry, uh, beautiful reproductions of some of the artifacts that you will have seen in museums um, and also high fashion. So there's very chic shopping in Mykonos. And then this is an image um, of the one of the windmills looking out to the harbor, uh, which is where our ship will be coming in. And our accommodations in Naxos are at the Porto Naxos Hotel, 
uh, which again has a magnificent swimming pool that uh, people will enjoy, I'm sure, um, and lovely accommodations. Again, very modern, up-to-date, sophisticated accommodations throughout our entire trip. I wanted to end um, this presentation with uh, the slide of the Messini Plain in Crete. I don't know if you recall earlier, we were looking at a slide of the um, archaeological site of Festos, which had a lot of really large rugged rocks. I mentioned that it's um, a very authentic ancient site. And in the background, I pointed out the beautiful plain that is behind it. But I wanted you to see this just to get a sense of uh, what it's like to be amidst the olive groves, amidst the vineyards, um, here you see the snow-clad mountains in the distance, and even in June, um, there may still be a bit of snow on the tops of the mountains, and then the sky in Greece is also magnificent and something that I really, really love about the country. So um, with this, um, I wanted to move on to a few uh, details about the trip. We will have for you a single Greek guide, one Greek guide who will be with you throughout the entire trip. So she will start with you with Athens and be with you throughout. Um, based on our many years of working in Greece, we work with really splendid Greek guides. I know that Carrie can attest to that. And um, these are university trained. The certification for guiding in Greece is uh, very high. And um, these are not only people who are extremely knowledgeable, but just warm and wonderful, and you just love being with them. Um, so I, I think that's important to point out that you're not going to have a different guide when you go to the different islands. You'll have the same guide. And another thing that's advantageous about that is that the guide provides continuity and connections between the things you've seen and you won't get a repeat every day on the Greek economy or <laughs> basic Greek history. I mean, the guide will, will build up over the case of the, uh, over the length of the trip. Um, the weather in June is really lovely. Um, it is, uh, you will expect temperatures in the upper 70s, low 80s during the day. And then in the evening, it gets quite a bit cooler. So it'll be like, light sweater weather, windbreaker weather in the evenings. Um, so that's another thing that I wanted to emphasize. But I think another thing that's gonna be really special about traveling to Greece now is there are not gonna be as many tourists as there would normally be. And um, it will have started, there will be tourists, but they're not going to be the mega crowds that one um, can find in Greece starting as early as June. And so I think that um, that will be also just kind of an added benefit for you of traveling at this time of year. Um, I did want to bring you up to date on some of the um, safety, the health and safety protocols for traveling to Greece now. Um, Greece just announced yesterday that, well, first I should say that Greece has recently already established a reciprocal arrangement with Israel so that anyone who is vaccinated between either Greek or Israel citizens can now travel um, at freedom between the two countries. Greece has also just announced that all travelers, and this of course includes Americans, um, who have been vaccinated and show evidence of the vaccination will be welcome in Greece. Um, and also they will be accepting negative COVID-19 tests. So, you know, just to let you know that, that this is how things are moving. Um, Greece at the very opening of the pandemic was uh, one of the most successful countries in all of Europe in um, really limiting the spread of the coronavirus in their country and the types of protocols that they put into place immediately have been maintained. And all of the hotels where we will be staying, the motor coaches, um, the restaurants, all of the public environments, I mean, even you know, retail establishments, Greece has set up very strict protocols that need to be followed by these establishments. We've also carefully chosen 
the establishments, but you can be absolutely certain of the protocols being followed in Greece. We do um, anticipate, we do plan at this point in time that travelers will wear masks whenever we're in public settings. We will have um, social distancing on the motor coaches. Um, we'll be following all the regulations. We will, if it, if it is deemed by Greece and sort of in this country at that point in time that we should be taking daily temperatures, we will do so. So we're not going to say, you know, at this moment in time, exactly what we'll be doing four months from now, but I do want you to be assured that whatever is appropriate uh, for your health and safety is absolutely what will be followed by our company, by our ground agents in Greece. And it's also what will be required of the Greek government itself. Um, so I think you can feel very secure in that respect. We do use the whisper devices for all of the guiding. So um, that allows you to, you know, have your ear sets and hear the guide at a distance and practice social distancing. You don't have to be crowded up in a little huddled group to hear the guide speaking loudly to you, but rather you can explore the sites and listen to the guide and um, practice the social distancing in that way. Um, so Carrie, can you think of things that you would like for me to cover that I have not addressed yet before we open it up to um, general questions? Uh, no, you've covered everything. What I, I really want to go. Can I go please? Because that looked amazing. Can I go with and you? Let me, I know, I know. And it looks so good outside as we've all got this big snowfall that's come across the United States. It, that looked particularly inviting. I will say that I was able to travel uh, with uh, Margaret, with the former, with the Travel Dynamics Group, with a, a family group many years ago to Greece and uh, had a fabulous time. One of the things I remember is a uh, five mile walk through Crete and I'm not going to make you all do that, but I can assure you there's ample opportunity for exercise, getting out there, walking around. You're not, uh, you're gonna enjoy a Mediterranean diet and you're gonna enjoy some exercise at the same time. And here's some amazing uh, explanations of all this incredible uh, archeology span that you'll be seeing. Uh, let me address too the professor situation at Vanderbilt. We talked about that, uh, Margaret addressed that. They have incredible guides that are there with you every moment and are certainly totally capable of giving you information. Our normal uh, situation at Vanderbilt is that we enjoy sending or want to send professors on every trip. Right now, neither staff nor, nor faculty are traveling. Uh, we don't know when that will be lifted. And if it is lifted, we'll do our very best to accommodate that on this trip, even though I assure you that if they are not available because they're catching up with a lot of the different student activities that they've needed to catch up with during this time, um, you will be fully covered on all information. And we'll be getting you information from our professors too about various things if you ask about them along the way. But I assure you that will be covered. Uh, the other thing, too, I'll tell you, Clay Krebs, who's on the phone, uh, excuse me, on the line, but you can't see him, traveled extensively through Greece during his master's program and uh, has incredible knowledge, better knowledge than I do, actually, about the individual islands and all things, because he really took an extensive trip um, and is a great resource as well, so he can tell you some fun things. So we're stocked with knowledge uh, if you have questions. So with that, I see that we do have a question. Thank I'm you. excited about that. So are there quarantine requirements for those who have not been vaccinated? Right now, Margaret, I'll throw that to you. Sure. Um, right now, that is unknown. Um, Greece very much believes that by around Easter, so, you know, April, um, late March, early April, that they will have a decision on whether or not 
quarantining would be required, like that would be the latest that they would decide whether if someone has a COVID-19 uh, is test, whether there would need to be quarantining. So that's something we have to, uh, that's something we have to monitor. I can't give you a definitive answer right now on that. Definitely with the vaccine, there's no, there's no issue. Did that cover it, Carrie, do you think? I think so, yes. Um, right. Other questions? This is your, your chance. Let me also say that Thalassa Journeys can direct you to a good operator that they've been using for years, Valerie Wilson Travel, uh, right, Margaret? I believe yes. that's correct, uh, for making your airline reservations, giving you all of the details on what those cancellation penalties would be, if any, um, you know, for your air tickets. I think they've done a very good job overall with the airlines of making these things flexible. So. I would encourage you if, if you know you haven't signed on uh, and you want to look into what is available to you on the air that you contact them and let them work that out for you because they will get you there at the right time organize the pickup at the hotel excuse me from the airport to the hotel all those things are really important to making your start to a trip very good exactly and i will add that um for many years now the only non-stop service from the United States to um, Athens has been on Delta. And uh, there's a daily nonstop flight on Delta from New York to Athens. But in anticipation of the strong demand for travel to Greece, American Airlines about a month ago announced that they are initiating nonstop service between New York and Athens um, that starts on the 3rd of June. And this morning I went online just to check on the actual dates of the um, Vanderbilt trip to look into the American Airlines service. And it's great. I mean, it, uh, it departs New York at 420 in the afternoon, gets into Athens at 850 in the morning. So easy for people to make connections from other cities into New York. And then likewise coming back, the flight lands in New York at 3.05, so there's plenty of time to make connections home. But another interesting thing that I saw is that business class round trip airfare is only $1,901, which wow. I was just astounded. Um, so in any case, I'm glad you brought up the airfare carry. And I realized that one of the things I meant to mention before, but that I failed to, is that we do have a very flexible um, policy right now, a very relaxed policy on deposits and cancellations. Mm -hmm. So um, your deposit for the trip is fully refundable until 60 days before departure, so that people feel very comfortable about that. In other words, if this is something you want to do, but you're just not quite sure yet, you would know that up until 60 days prior, your deposit would be fully refunded. And then after that time, we have very generous uh, terms on the refund. So that's all detailed in the brochure, but we just want to do everything we can to make it possible for you to proceed with, with peace of mind. And on that note, if you did receive a postcard in the mail, you received a postcard only, you did not receive the full brochure. And the full brochure is on our website to review. And you can open it up on our website. It's the full brochure start to finish, not just a postcard. The postcard was more of a smaller marketing piece to tell people the trip had been uh, changed to June and uh, just kind of gather some more interest, which we've definitely gotten so we're doing well on this. We hope you'll join us. Margaret, I think if you don't have anything else, let's see, I oh, one more question, thank you. Just one I think. Uh, is it possible to extend the trip on either end of the VU tour? Yes, it is. Yes, so if you, if you would like to spend more time in Athens, you can extend. Um, if you would like our help in um, assisting you to visit a different part of Greece, we'd be happy to assist with that. Yes, they can definitely do that. Any other questions before we wrap it up? This is your chance. 
Okay, well, we're here. Margaret's here. Clay's here. Always ready to answer your questions. Now, remember, we are working remotely. We're working, obviously, at our houses. So if you want to give us a call, uh, please do so. We normally forward our phones to our cell phones and we'll answer. Sometimes if we're out, we will keep them to uh, just answering them in the office, but we will return your call. So please leave us a message. But if you do have any questions uh, or want to review this again, it is recorded and it will be put up on our website, uh, not immediately, but in the next several days. So if you want to refer back to this webinar and look at it again, and have more information about it or forgot something about it or want to look at a particular island, you can do that. So thanks to everybody. We had, um, you know, about 15 people on the call, which we so appreciate. That's a wonderful turnout. I trust that you're staying safe and warm, you're getting your vaccinations, and we're all going to be ready to travel really soon. So give us a call if you have any other questions. Margaret, thank you immensely for putting this together. It's a great tour of, of Greece and certainly we need to go with with Thales the journeys on the trip to Greece. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you all for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Bye bye. Have a great day, everyone.